Welcome back to All Real Estate, All the Time with Whitney Nicely, where we teach you the foundation of real estate investing for profits. Now, here's Whitney. Real estate investing for profits. I mean, that that's an awesome little tagline that I have right there, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't cute? Yeah. Real estate investing for profits, because what do we all want? Money. money. <laughs> we all want more money. We've got less time, and we need to make more money. So what... What's a good way for a young person, a millennial, or even a, you know, Gen Xer, how are they going to make more money, Julie? And I don't even know what any of those mean anymore. <laughs> I don't know the years. I don't even know what I am. Um, well, one way they can do that is they can turn a primary into a rental house if they purchase another primary. Or it, if you're living in a house and maybe you have a mortgage on it, maybe you don't, maybe it was given to you, um, and then you decide you want something else. You want something bigger your family's expanding you've just got a lot of stuff and you want more space or you don't want to live in that area of town anymore or a lot of times people move because especially if they're in an older not millennial generation maybe they've remarried sure and you don't want to live in either one's past house exactly so but instead of selling those houses yes maybe you just start to rent them you, you buy a new our house a new our house that's what my husband and i did yep um we each have a rental house and yep. we i being in the business i it was a no-brainer to me to turn it into a rental yep that was just nor, the norm around my house i actually bought that house in the beginning to turn it into a rental so now it is a rental um but eventually i will make money having it as a rental because you can only sell a property one time but you can rent it forever <laughs> <laughs> that's a good line too i like that i might have to borrow that yep so i guess that's why i when i buy the houses i buy them and i buy them buy them buy them buy them, buy them. Right. i don't sell as many because i do these lease options i do right. the rent to owns i'm depending on my tenant buyer to get a mortgage so that they can buy it but that's you know why i have the heavy application fees in the beginning is because right. i'm basically selling it to them in the beginning do you ever want to keep any of them no no. If you listen to the first 10 minutes of the show, I don't really like houses as much as I like quadplexes. <laughs> <laughs> and I will not do a lease option on a quadplex. If I get a quadplex in, if you have a quadplex or a fiveplex or a 10 unit apartment building and you don't want it anymore, please call me. I I can't buy enough of those to satisfy my hunger for them. Like <laughs> I absolutely adore multifamily units. It's not that I don't like houses. It's just that I love, <laughs> love quadplexes. So send me those, send me those. Gotcha. Gotcha. So one other thing. So what you're basically saying is if you graduate college and you think, okay, well, I've got good credit, I've got some money, I can go buy a house. So say I buy a cute little 2-1 in Fountain City, and then, what, 10 years later, I get married, we have kids, we move on, we've got more cars, we've got more stuff, we need something bigger than a 2-1. So instead right. of finding an agent and listing that house and selling it, you know, you've got good credit, you can buy a new house, you're both together now, so you've yep. got more income coming in, you can buy a bigger, better house without having to sell this. And you can tell your mortgage broker that the plan is to keep this 2-1 yes. and go buy a 4-3. Yep. Okay, and you can do that. People do that all the time. It's not uncommon. And based on your debt to income ratio, you may need to have a lease on that older home but that's not a big deal. Previous home. Your previous home, yeah. Not older. <laughs> not older. Well. In this case, it was yeah, older. <laughs> exactly. But your previous house, they may need proof of a lease and maybe even like a um, security deposit check copy. But people do it all the time. It is not out of the norm. Most people are under the impression, though, that to buy a new house, they need to sell the one they're living in. Some people feel the need some people are not comfortable being landlords and that is okay uh, it is not for everyone and it is not for the weak <laughs> we're strong <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> however if you think you want to be a landlord that is a that's an easy way to do it and if even if you don't think you want to be a landlord but say that your 10-year goal is to have two or three rental houses yeah the best way to do it is to just turn your previous home into a rental because yes. the biggest chunk of buying a house is the origination fees 
the money you have to put down, the expense in flipping it. But if you've been living in it, you've already paid all of that. Yeah. Yeah. You've already done all the updates. You're you're done. Or not. Or, or not, yeah. <laughs> but you know everything's working properly. And yes. if anything bad happens, you kind of probably know how to fix it. Or you exactly. know who to call to go fix it anyway. So you're you're two steps ahead of if you just go out and buy a house and stick somebody in it. My new tenant, before he... After we moved out and before he moved in, I already had a list of things. I needed a new dishwasher. Not because the dishwasher was bad, but just because the gasket was getting old. I could have probably replaced that, but I did not want to get the call every day about the dishwasher leaking. <laughs> so it has a new dishwasher mm-hmm. because dishwashers are the worst. They go out all the time. And a few other little things. But we were able to walk him through the house and say, this is kind of weird, but this is how you fix it. <laughs> kind of thing and you don't always know that if you just buy a you don't pack of houses right and if you buy a pack of houses then you've got to put the money down to buy it you've got to spend the money to advertise it to get somebody in it mm-hmm. and then you've got to fix all those little things but if it's a house that you've been living in you know you love you like the area mm-hmm. then you can help all your neighbors out because i yes. know as a neighbor when my neighbors put their house up for sale i got kind of anxious who's going to move in here what kind of people are going to rent it what kind of people are going to buy it you know we've got our neighborhood kind of how we like it right we don't want somebody coming in and messing up our pattern yeah so your neighbors will actually appreciate it if you start to rent that house because you will be a better landlord and you will monitor it better if you used to live there yes i agree however if you if you are interested in a package of houses i I have one for sale (laughs) So contact me about that. How many houses are in this package? Seven. So you can sell seven houses at one time. Yes. I don't think people know that either. Is You can sell multiple yeah. properties in oh, yeah. one big lump. Yes. And you can buy them in one big lump. You can make, you know, if you're trying to buy five houses, you could honestly make all of those contingent upon the other four closing, couldn't you? That'll sure. make all your agents want to pull their hair out. Yes. <laughs> But it's totally possible. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was talking to an agent last year, and I only she had a package yeah. of houses that she was trying to sell, and I only wanted one. And she wouldn't break up the package nope. just for that one little dinky house. Yep, my seller won't either. I don't even know if she checked with her seller. She just didn't want to do the paperwork oh, to divide it out. I don't think. But and honestly, he wasn't going to want to owner finance it, and I didn't want to deal with it if he wouldn't take payments over the long term. Sure. And talking about owner financing, I was talking to somebody, I think at the radio station here about it this morning. I think a lot of people don't understand what owner financing is. Okay. So why don't you explain it to it's, them? It's basically where the owner is financing me the property. So instead of going to the bank and getting financed for it, I'm just financing it through the owner, through the previous They become seller. the bank. They become the bank. And you become the owner. I become the owner. I make them payments. And a lot of times, okay, let's let's use my $100,000 house. If you are asking $100,000 for your house and I give you cash or a mortgage or something for it, mm-hmm. you're going to end up with sixty or $70,000. Right. Because you got to pay taxes, you got to yeah. pay fees, I'm going to make you pay closing costs, and I'm going to do all this stuff. So you're not going to end up with a hundred grand. Correct. And if it sits on the market for six months or so, then you lose out on six months of income yes. if you'd owner financed it to me yep okay so also if you owner finance it to me and you want to charge me eight percent interest so that you feel like you're winning (laughs) you're going to get taxed on your interest yes again you're going to end up with like 60 or 70 thousand dollars yeah so on my owner financing and owner financing only works if the house is free and clear like you have no mortgage no liens no nothing on it if i say i'm going to give you a hundred thousand over 10 years you're going to end up with a hundred thousand right because you're not paying uncle sam every time you turn around right and we work all that out in the paperwork and a lot of people this is the ultimate dave ramsey strategy because i don't have to give my credit i don't have to give any money i don't have to give you know my firstborn or my doggy right you just buy the house you can start making payments on it next week i can put some tenants in it or i can do a lease option on it but it doesn't matter i'm in control of the property you just became the bank and it's super cool. Just people don't know about it. Do, whenever you find owners that are willing to do owner financing, do they have a hard time relinquishing 
relinquishing control of the property? No, my people are usually so over it by that point that they don't even care. They just want to see some money coming in. They don't want a headache. And that's the other reason. Like the people in the Fountain City house, they'd been landlords. They didn't want to be landlords. Actually, she is a landlord in her professional life, and she didn't want to do it when she got home. Oh, wow. So she just wanted to deal with me because, you know, all I'm going to do is send you a payment once a month or send the payment to the bank once a month. I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to bother you. I'm not going to do anything. Um, Usually... People call me and they're like, hey, I found another house for you. My friend has this. And that's the only time we communicate is when you have another lead for me. Like, and that's what they want. They just want the freedom. They want the flexibility. They want the money coming in. And they know you're going to pay. And they want it easier. Yep. It's it's good, easy money. <laughs> so if you've got a house that you want to sell, Whitney buys houses. I will buy houses. I don't want to as much as I want to buy a quadplex. But you can call me 865-309-4500. And we'll be back to talk about more ways you could save pros and cons with landlording. Also, call my mama at Walker's Truck Contractors if you need some gravel. 865-933-0225.